flash and do their little dance while the thing's on. It's actually pretty annoying. I wish that they weren't there. And then all the wiring that supports all the little switches. Now the bummer is, of course, is that it all just sits here and uh, you got all this wiring showing. I'm thinking about maybe doing some kind of sheet metal or something that comes up along the roof here and then winds down kind of over here on both sides to kind of hide this to make it look a little bit better. But initially, before I did that, I want to make sure everything's working fine and that I don't have any issues before I actually start to button up. Although taking this thing in and out is really easy. It, it's only mounted with right now with two bolts right here, one on each side. And then uh, it sits on the back here, tight against the back of the cab and right on here. And it actually has a little notch back here to sit uh, between uh, where this rib comes down. So it doesn't go left or right and it's really it's really tight i actually don't need to bolt it up in the back it, it even when i'm bouncing around it never ever moves so this console by the way uh, i got again from those militaryguys.com and you can get it in the full flavor that they offer it or you can get it just as a kind of a blank template with just the bar basically and i think the light and uh and then you can add what you want the things that, that I added that didn't come with it, obviously, was the uh, the power, the CB, the three uh, optional gauges or inputs right here, and these lights, the three lights. That all didn't come with the console. I added all that stuff myself. Um, so, But you can get it set up, and it comes with the 12-volt inverter that's actually behind uh, this guy here. Then you have this uh, music amplifier input guy here, the speaker and the unit itself. And, uh, I, you know, it's, I said, I, I really, so far it's been a real winner for me and it solves a lot of issues as far as space and things. Okay. Um, another thing I ended up doing is if you look over there next to where the cup holder is, you'll see a GI 90 degree flashlight sitting there. And there's one on each side. There's that one there. And then there's this one right here. That's why I have one on each side. And you know what they say about stuff like this. One is none. Two is one. And so on and so forth. Three is two. So uh, I ended up just getting those flashlights. And they're regular, not LED flashlights. And uh, then I used uh, a mag light uh, mount on there. So they clip on. Here, let me see if I can bring this around here. So hopefully I'm doing this without really looking. You can see that they just kind of come off. And this little mount right here is for Maglite C and D cell size uh, flashlights. The ones that are two cell or three cell, four cell. That's what this is for. This is a, a clip that, that's for that. Fits these perfectly. So I just bought these come as you can buy them as a pair. So I got two of them. I had my two flashlights. And they just... Clip right in, and now you have two flashlights, and they look right. They almost look like that's part of the stock setup, <laughs> which is really sweet. Uh, the other thing I ended up doing, let's see if I can get this out of the way, is I ended up putting the shifter boot, and let's see if I can get this to the transfer case boot. I put on there uh, again if you've been driving these for any length of time you know that those are just giant holes in the floor and during the summer yeah, sorry about that during the summer all all it is is like having a hair dryer heat coming into this thing through the holes here and during the winter it's arctic air comes blowing through these things so they're not very expensive and you can still buy these through from various places uh and it basically cuts all that off and you're golden after that so again another upgrade that's been highly recommended and useful now i'm going to show you one other thing that's not normally here and it's this guy right here you'll notice i have two of these switches and at first you might think oh i know what that is that's for the deep forwarding no it's not uh, although i'm going to be adding that it's not in here yet. This truck has something that's extremely rare, and I think there might only be three of them out there from what I've read on Steel Soldiers. This actually has a, uh, a depot-installed rear axle locker on it. 
That's what that is. So that engages and disengages the third axle in the back. Um, I haven't read that that was anything that, that any, you know, again, that, that was a standard military item. The only thing I've ever read that, that even comes close is, uh, some Air Force trucks, I believe, were modified with, uh, optional rear axles being locked and unlocked. This might be one of them. I haven't investigated enough, but that, that was done. In fact, there's a little warranty card right there that actually says... That they did this and they give you a warranty and what year it was 1988 that this was done i haven't investigated this yet but that little guy there was put in in 1988 and i'll go back to the back axle and i'll show you what they did and so that makes this truck really rare and another thing that has me kind of like thinking it might be one of those three trucks is that i've noticed that under the paint and certain parts of the truck it's air force blue it's not the, the woodland camo or even the army green. So I'm thinking this might be one of those three that were experimented with and uh, had that rear locking axle put installed. I, again, I'm not sure, but that was that was done uh, from the depot, which is really interesting. Okay, gonna get down now. Jeez, oh, oh, sorry about that. Okay. Um, Oh, one other thing I ended up doing. Let me just move this out of the way. Since I'm doing indicator lights, you also notice up here in the ignition, I have another light here. Now, this is the same kind of light that's on the overhead console. It actually uh, moves like about a quarter turn left or right, and that's how it basically dims or shows the three triangle symbols. Um, so that's when the ignition is on, this is on. Um, call me tweaky, but... I figured since I had the light and I like the idea of, of having indication of things on, I decided to go ahead and put that in. And uh, it's just a direct connect to the, to the ignition switch there. And so that was nothing radical. Um, one other thing I, little, I did for all these add-ons and different electrical stuff here, what I ended up doing was I made like a uh, under dash um, kind of a junction point looks like a mess but i just i was working on it yesterday so i just kind of zip tied it all out of the way for now but this has got um ground and positive military connectors connected up to it so that if i'm adding things instead of having to to clip on the wires whatever i can just come right over here and i got my ground and my power right here it's on a circuit breaker and i'm good to go and it's easy to get to because it's on terminals and things like that so I ended up doing that as well, at least for now. Maybe things will be different. So let me go back and show you that axle because I'm sure you guys are probably wondering what the heck is going on with that. So, uh, oh, yeah, and I'll talk about the engine in a second here. Okay, so underneath the truck, you'll see, let me just get underneath here. Uh, you'll see that that doesn't look like a normal rear axle. Indeed, there is stuff on the left side of that thing that's not normally there. So let's get a closer look at that. So you have to excuse me, then I'm gonna have to. Oh, there's my cat. Oh, kitty. Oh, my kitties are always underneath here. Look out. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's what they did. So there's the air switching mechanism that's there. And then it's got that uh, round plate. Looks like it kind of like almost its own little skid plate there to keep things from getting bashed there. That red wire, I believe, is for the, uh, the light indicator on the dash, which doesn't work and I haven't fixed that yet, but I got a wire run back here that I need to connect it to so that it will. And then it's got uh, welded onto the side of the, uh, the differential housing. Looks like a, another part of the mechanism to go ahead and show that thing that it's, uh, that it's you know, or make it work that it's, so it switches inside and stuff. But that's all been welded on there to the differential housing itself. And then the rest of the stuff looks like it's all been bolted on it. Let me see if I can get some stuff underneath it here. So you get an idea of what it looks like from the bottom. Yeah, so this is, 
this is kind of what this is the way I bought it and this is the way it was done back in 1988 um, if you got if you know more than I do about this setup then you can just let me know but as far as I know this is a pretty rare bird here in that respect as far as that kind of add-on especially it being done not as an aftermarket thing but actually by the military so uh there it is and it does switch in and out you know i've checked it so it does what it does it's supposed to do so that's really interesting as far as that's concerned <laughs> another thing so uh one other thing that the truck uh is not stocked with is that it actually has a cummins 5.9 diesel in it turbo diesel yes it is that 12 valve 5.9 diesel in fact it's the same engine that you'd find in a lot of the dodge trucks from that time i think it was from like 86 through like 92 was the 12 valve or 94 and then they switched to a 24 valve so uh anyway so the truck has has that it's got the uh, the cummins now that makes a huge difference. Show the front of the truck again. Uh, huge difference. It adds immediately 100 stock horsepower more to it. So I believe the standard LDS multi-fuel is something like 135, 136. This comes stock at 235 without any modifications. And you can, guys take these motors out racing and they can take them up to five, 600 horsepower all day without major changes. So uh, I've got some stuff on my list that I'm probably going to go ahead and upgrade this thing with uh, as far as you can get me a little more horsepower. But uh, it makes a huge, huge difference in its drivability. It, hills are no longer a problem. Instead of you being the problem, you're keeping up with everybody. Uh, you know, hills that you're crawling up at 25 miles an hour, you're going up at 40 or 50 with that motor and tire combination. Huge, huge difference really glad that uh, i bought this truck with that motor in it and they make a gazillion aftermarket goodies for it because it's such a popular motor uh so you can you can just do what you want you can leave it stock or go freaking to the moon with it and it will get you there okay so uh this has been kind of a long one but you know you can see what i've done already uh which is quite a bit and uh i got a lot more I'm planning on doing with it and uh, so I'll just go ahead and uh, that's it for today you've caught up to where I'm at currently with it and I'll see you on the next video and um, we'll see how it goes from there